think we have to proceed now uh, to just keep the time. And now Michael is going to talk about, uh, and you will see s late in this session, you will start, you also see some videos on exactly how we did the surgery and so on, on and all the results will be presented later. Yeah, the, 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 um, uh, I, I was to talk about the deceased donors, but I decided to uh, uh, include some anatomical uh, uh, discussions here because I think it's uh, of importance, uh, especially when you discuss uh, 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 laparoscopic procedures or, or, or um, uh, robotic uh, procedures, because this uh, uh, actually, uh, d despite everything we did, uh, was a little bit of a surprise for the first uh, patients we did. It was more complicated than we uh, could anticipate. So, um, uh, retrieving a organ uh, should, should um, allow cold preservation and it should uh, allow adequate reperfusion in the new recipient. This, does, this is actually the optimal uh, or, or the object of the whole thing. Uh, for a deceased donor, uh, this would require what we call a multi-organ retrieval. And this is a procedure that differs some uh, in, in different centra. You would think that it's um, a standardized procedure, but it is not. It's actually a Cochrane study um, done in 2006 that looked at different um, procedures here, and it, it actually differs uh, between centers. Uh, but um, what you can say about it is that it's um, a, a procedure where you do minimal dissection in the donor uh, and then you perfuse the organs with a preservation solution, cold preservation solutions at about four degrees, four to six uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, and then you remove the organs. And, and the thing is that um, the, uh, there are different priorities of the organs, uh, either you like it or not, but the, the heart, uh, for example, uh, has to be reproduced in four hours. As that means that the thoracic surgeons are very keen on getting their organs first, so they get their organs first. So the heart lungs goes first, and then usually uh, it's followed by the liver, pancreas, intestine, and the kidney guys are left uh, alone t to the end and, and do the rest. And, and in this case, with uterus, I think the uterus has to be retrieved even after the kidneys. That's the sad things. But um, having said that, our, our studies I implicate that uh, uterus is actually uh, a good organ. It, uh, uh, if it's reperfused uh, with cold storage solution, uh, it, it, it's no real danger with the cold ischemia time. That, that should be possible. Uh, so here you are, uh, I mean, I mean the, with a deceased donor, uh, you would of course uh, like to be alone if you want to do a uterus transplant because then you, you don't have to worry about the, 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 uh, uh, you could have long vas uh, vascular structures and so on, but this will not happen, I tell you. I mean, uh, we're looking here at the young donor, uh, hopefully, and if you have a young donor, there will be a multi-organ donor and it will not be just uterus. I'm sorry about that. So, let's have a look at um, uh, pictures from uh, the Netter uh, library. You recognize here uh, the, the uh, pelvic region uh, and uh, when you retrieve organs, uh, you, you, you get access to this and, and the, 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 pr the uh, technical procedure for a multi-organ re re retrieval is well described, the principle already in the um, uh, late 70s or, or 80s when uh, the, the multivisual transplants first was described by Thomas Starso. And um, here you actually see uh, one illustration from uh, um, a publication uh, by Starso. It's 
1987, uh, uh, surgery, gynecology and obstetrics. So already in that time, transplant surgeons were in the field. Um, I deliberately put this with, in the, with the font six, so I don't think you can read it, but, <laughs> but uh, you, you can trust me. And this is uh, basically how it's performed. You put a, um, uh, a, a, a catheter into the aorta. This is above the, uh, uh, the bifurcation. And then you put one catheter into the inferior mesenteric vein. And this is because you want to be able to flush the liver or the portal system together with the, uh, the, 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 uh, the remaining uh, visceral organs. So in this uh, way, you, can, you flush all uh, abdominal organs, including the thoracic organs, uh, uh, through the uh, superior mesenteric artery and the uh, celiac trunk. The problem with this um, procedure, of course, is that the arterial supply to the uh, uh, um, uterus is below this. So we have to modify this if you want to use the disease donor approach. Let's have a look at the <coughs> uh, arterial supply. Um, this is uh, from uh, Grant Anatomy, uh, and, and I think I will um, send a, a mail to him and say that he, he has, uh, he has uh, not uh, a correct uh, book. Because this is the external uh, iliac artery. This is the um, uh, anterior uh, part of the uh, internal iliac uh, artery here. This, so far, you you are uh, you, you recognize the structures, and as a transplant surgeon, this field is very common uh, in kidney transplantation. But now we're getting uh, to a place where I'm usually not. That is the uterine artery. You see that here. And as you can see, it's a branch of the uh, uh, iliac, internal iliac. Now, this book uh, is not correct when it states that the umbilical obliterator or the obliterative artery goes from above the uh, uh, um, uterine artery. In, our, in, in all the baboons we've done and in all the humans we've done, it's actually the uh, uh, obliterative that goes, uh, continues after the branch off of the uterine artery. So that's one of the landmarks we're using when we are doing the dissection. So I think um, uh, if you try to memorize this, uh, the, the, the important landmarks here, both for the deceased and for the uh, live donors is uh, the branch off of the epigastric, if you're epigastric here, for the external, and then uh, to look for the uh, branch off of the uterine artery and the uh, obliterative, which would be in continuation here somewhere. We use that as a landmark uh, to look for that. And here you can see the same. He still uh, claims that uh, 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 this is the iliac, internal iliac, as uh, you can see here. And then you have the, uh, he says that this is the obliterative going here, uh, which we claim that this is wrong uh, because the uterine artery is here and the obliterative is usually branching off from that. Uh, regarding the vein supply, uh, veins are more problematic as usual. And this was maybe the most uh, tough lesson to, to learn uh, during the uh, procedure. And, and uh, especially in the live donors, but also in the uh, deceased donor, you have to, to watch for some landmarks. If you try to go for the, uh, uh, let's see if I have marked, yeah. This is the internal here. This is the external. This is a uterine vein going off uh, here. 
you see that, that it goes into the iliac here. To reach this uh, portion here is, is a pain, pain in the ass, to, to, to put it bluntly. Uh, and this is a place where we uh, never uh, used to be, we were never there as a transplant surgeon. And I, I, we learned also that uh, you guys are not there either because this is too deep in the pelvis. And it's very hard to get this freed off. So what we try to do here is to, to, to tie off the uh, internal iliac after the branch off of the uterine vein. Um, and to do that, uh, we really have to identify the internal iliac artery first and to get that uh, out of the way. Otherwise, it's, it's really difficult. So these are landmarks, uh, and as for the deceased donor, the inferior epigastric vein is very important uh, because you have to flush, and then when you're done with the flushing, you can tie off that, and then you will look for this landmark, tie off here, and then you could actually, if you do that on the artery and, and the vein side, you could uh, mobilize the whole package north. One other thing that we found out uh, during our work was uh, uh, the anatomy of the ovarian vein. You, as you can see here, there is actually a continuity between the uh, uterine vein and, and the ovarian vein at the level of the uh, ovaries, and then they continue up uh, to, to the um, uh, uh, left kidney in this case and to the right kidney uh, to the right, uh, on the right side to the cable vein, just below the uh, uh, kidney. So th this uh, knowledge uh, that we found that we could actually achieve a pretty long ovarian vein uh, was also very helpful uh, in, in the, um, uh, 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 in, in the, before re-implanting. Here you have the ovarian artery, and the, 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 that's the uterine artery branching off uh, it, it with one vaginal artery and one uh, going up like this. Uh, so this area, of course, in, in the uh, live donor procedure has to be dissected free very carefully. But in the deceased donor, you could actually just cut the ureters, ureters here and left, uh, uh, let the rest go to the kidney surgeons. And you could also cut the part of the bladder to use as supporting tissue. So that's the nice thing. Can, can I just emphasize here, because we, when we look at the video of the retrieval, uh, look at the uterine veins, which are usually either Above coming this uh, above the ureter or coming on the inside of the ureter, and that is very problematic later because uh, it may be that the major uterine vein goes between the ureter and the cervix in some cases, or outside on other cases, or it may be two of those major ones. And you will see that on the n next video that this is the problematic area. So I, th I think it's uh, when, if you want to, to go into this and, and try to, to, to uh, establish um, a, a program, uh, the studies of, of these parts in, uh, uh, in, in that book of anatomy is very good because uh, it, it is, uh, uh, it's another operation than a vertime. And uh, we've d gone through baboons uh, versus macaques. Uh, uh, we did uh, work on mostly on the uh, baboon, Papaya hamadryas, uh, to learn the anatomy, and it, they are very uh, similar. Uh, we end up with a, with a uterus that's flushed on the back table. Uh, this would be the, the, the thing for the live donor, but the deceased donor, the flushing would be in in the uh, 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 cadaver. And this uh, picture uh, Lisa showed before, you can see here the um, vein anastomosis, I think, and, and, and the, the, the veins are connected side to side, uh, a thing that we uh, didn't have to do in the humans uh, uh, unless we 
decided to connect both the ovarian and the, the uh, uterine vein together on one side. Uh, we did that in, in one case. Um, and this is uh, before uh, uh, retrieval. Um, we used, uh, in primates, we used the uh, uterus with ovaries and phalapian tube, as um, uh, Lisa said. Uh, and um, you can see the arteries here and the veins. And um, we also uh, modify that, as uh, uh, Matt said. So instead of just um, suturing the ovarian vessels directly, we could uh, uh, use a patch uh, from uh, the cava or the renal uh, vein, or we could um, use uh, iliac uh, arteries instead of ovarian arteries, which is uh, a huge uh, 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 difference. Uh, and also, if we want to go for the disease donors, uh, we can uh, actually, in best case scenarios, uh, if we have uh, very nice transplant surgeons that uh, allow us to get uh, the vessels, we could uh, get a, an aorta patch and doing an aorta to aorta anastomosis. Uh, this is possible in primates, uh, of course. We don't have any transplant surgeons there except nice ones. And then uh, the cava, of course, can also be used in, in um, uh, in the primates because we use uh, the cava all the way from uh, including part of the, the left renal vein and, and uh, this makes just one, one uh, hole to secure. And in the live donor uh, we usually use the iliac artery to the iliac artery just like we do in kidney transplants. So the human uterus disease donor, remember then that uh, instead of going up here, we have to, to find another trick. So we have to look down here, down to the femoral artery. And this is actually possible to do. So we have to insert uh, catheter there. And this is actually a, 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 an example of how, how you can do that. This is done in... Uh, a, a disease donor where they uh, were allowed to use the vessels. But this is not always the case because transplant surgeon sometimes wants the iliac vessels here for other purposes. So you have to be prepared to use uh, uh, alternatives. So this is the way to do it. You flush through femoral artery and inferior mesenteric vein. Uh, uh, together with the other team, you use topical cooling with ice slush, uh, putting on, on the surface of the organs. This is done uh, through delivery of the kidneys and should be done also on the uh, uterus. You identify the inferior mesenteric vessels and ligate, um, uh, oh sorry, inferior, inferior iliac vessels and ligate the uh, external iliac pedicles. Uh, um, you, this should be inferior epigastric vessels. Sorry about that. So th this is the, the lower part. You, you identify that when you're done with the flushing. You divide the external pedicles and then you go on to dissect the peritoneal layer and include part of the bladder wall with the first portion of the ureters. You don't have to think about uh, uh, cutting ureters. Uh, just leave the tissue, and, and in this case, uh, uh, the uh, renal transplant surgeons get the rest of it. Um, you then identify the internal iliac arteries and the obliterative umbilical artery, which will be the uh, other bo uh, border. You divide them distally of the the uterine artery, so, so that goes with the, the, the uh, um, on-block uh, piece. You expose the internal iliac vein this way, and this means that you can also 
after after you have moved away the obliterative artery, uh, you can um, divide the iliac vein distal of the uterine veins. In this way, you have uh, loosened the the, uh, the package. Then you divide the vagina after the peritoneal layer has been cleared from the rectum, and then. Um, the uterus with vascular pedicles that attach and first portion of the uterus are mobilized from the lower pelvis uh, north <laughs> and the kidneys with cat ureters usually have been removed at this time by the retrieval surgeon and depending on availability the ovarian veins can be followed to the caval vein uh, and the left renal vein uh, i don't think this will happen uh, so optionally, you can use the ovarian veins uh, a, a little bit shorter, but you will still have a usable length that will be helpful to, to, um, uh, to you. Uh, choosing using those or um, it, uh, the um, uh, 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 uterine veins. And then you move it to the back table. This allows reconstruction and further flushing. And this is also what we've done in the live donor procedures. Uh, sometimes uh, we find things that we did not anticipate. This means that we can fix it on the back table. Conclusion, anatomy is very similar in non-human primates and in humans, and we learned a lot by, by uh, studying both uh, humans before and, and the uh, primates. Anatomical studies um, uh, included not only baboons, as we, we uh, learned here, but uh, the baboons definitely helped us. And the human studies were also very, very uh, uh, useful, but we grossly underestimated the time uh, needed to do the dissection. It took a lot longer, and it took, uh, it took a couple of cases before we realized how to, to what strategy we, we wanted to use. And in the deceased donor, you could ideally uh, use end up with an aorta cava patch if the priority of the other organs used have been resolved. But I, uh, just a warning, I think this will be very rare. But the alternatives are good. You can include the ovarian veins closer to ovarius, uh, ovaria, ovaries and the uterine veins on a patch from the internal iliac uh, vein, just like in the live donors. And that should be uh, uh, good enough. Thank you. I think uh, you may have, because this has been an explanator, explan <coughs> explaining actually the anatomy, but uh, you may, you will see the technique real closely because now we have two videos, one for retrieval and one for transplantation. So I th in a way, I think we can wait with the questions to after those videos, if that is okay. <laughs>